was the probate value £100 per coin rather than market value? Yes. Uh, and as, if it was sovereigns, it would be a pound. And if it was a quintuple sovereign, it would be five pounds because that is what they are known as. And I was very clear with my accountant and I said to him, if I had a piece of paper that was a £20 note, I would be expected to declare it as having a value of £20. And I wasn't questioned on this. It was accepted. So it remains to be seen. I think I've got a good case, put it that way, if I needed to have that conversation with um, with a government official because they would have to admit that paper money was worthless. Inheritance planning and how precious metals can help. And I'll be talking about, um, I think we'll, we'll probably cover some questions uh, at the end. So if you, and you can also put things in your chat, in the chat. So if you've got questions as we go along. Uh, on the call today, we've got Melissa, who works who works for, for me in, at Blyer, and also Richard, who works in the marketing team. And we've got a guest, Glenn, on the call too, who's come as a participant, but he's an accountant, so he might be able to give us some tips as well um, on taxes or put me straight if I, if I steer you off slightly in the wrong direction. <clears throat> I'm not a tax expert. I'm sharing my own experience. So um, I'll just go on to the next slide, which is a disclaimer. So it's basically, please note precious metal prices may go down as well as up. Blyer accepts no responsibility for any losses based on information we have provided. We do not offer investment advice, but share our experience and knowledge for the purpose of raising awareness. Ultimately, it's up to you to do your own research and if necessary, obtain professional advice before making an investment decision. I think I missed a slide. So, Blyer was established 15 years ago uh, and we support to help you make the best decisions when it comes to buying and selling bullion. Um, our goal is to demystify and make bullion investment more accessible to everyone. Uh, we've consistently achieved good FIFO, excellent FIFO um, ratings. Um, um, and our score never falls below 4.9 or 5 out of 5. <clears throat> and we've been with FIFO for, I think it's about seven or eight years, and all that time we've maintained that level. So we again achieved the Platinum Award for 2024. Um, Inheritance tax is a complicated subject. Well, the tax itself is quite straightforward, but navigating it, I think, can be quite complicated. Uh, when, when we start to apply this to our own lives and our own families. So um, this, the intention is just to get you to start thinking about the subject, um, give you a few pointers as to where you can get information, help when making a review or plan, uh, and enable, put us in a better position to help our loved ones if asked to do so. Um, I think first got involved with, came across dealing with inheritance tax when my grandmother died and I was in my thirties and my father was, um, arguing to and fro with the district valuer over the value of the property that we all lived in. It was a house that was divided up and the district valuer at that time was said, well, I think this property is worth this much because um, a developer might come along and apply for planning consent 
and be able to do this and this and this and therefore that's what the value might be so you know that first opened my eyes up to how subjective this area really is you kind of think it's very cut and dry black and white but there's a lot of gray areas and and this is where i think bullying comes into its own uh, and you can apply what 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 i talk about in your own way and what you do with your precious metals at the end of the day is it's your business it's up to you to make any declarations you think you need to declare and so on um we we have a duty to our clients who keep bullying in storage with us and we can touch on that as well in the session if there's time so so anyway um um so we want to be equipped to answer questions and to set our set our estate up in a way that helps us to you know because our, our money our investments are there firstly to support us as we grow old and you know to be or you might be looking at this from the point of view of another person but um so if if i was say looking at this for myself i need to make sure that my investments are going to see me through my life and i like also to be able to leave something for my children to give me a leg up because that's what my parents have done for me um and that might also look like doing something before you die so you know opening this subject up just will bring up all kinds of questions not just about inheritance tax so think about how a death in the family might impact the relationships of those left behind when my dad died it got at times it got quite nasty and because i was the person dealing with the business side of things i got the brunt of some of the family things which weren't happy in the family but you know i'm happy to say that that's all resolved now and but at the time it was not very nice to deal with and i think if you can do something to protect your children or your loved ones from having to go through some of those things which could be avoided later on see what you can do about setting things up in a better way um, if you've bought bullion find out how your bullying dealer operates and what they will need to be able to help you when the time comes or to help your family or you know throughout your the the intended relationship with that person and i guess the same thing goes for your relationships with anyone you might have financial investments with why planning is helpful and what to consider um, it's an opportunity to consider how you want your family to be left when you're gone and how to manage a positive outcome making a clear will and perhaps um, another separate document uh, about your wishes um, um, opportunity to consider how you want your family to be left um, make a clear will and let people know where possible what your intentions are and if it might even help to have a family meeting um, but some not all families are harmonious that doesn't always apply you have to use your own judgment here and chat with someone that you trust about this i mean i've got a really good friend that i talk to um and i have a good relationship with my children who are now young adults so in my case i've made my children my executors because there's only two of them and they get on with each other but that's not always the case <clears throat> Um, I've also got a third person, which is one of my best friends, and she's there um, to help if, if that becomes necessary. Um, understand the tax implications 
affecting your estate. Um, you might not, there might not be any. It depends on how much money you've got and how it's, how it's set up. You might have trusts um, that takes money outside your estate. So, you know, there are, there are lots of pieces to this and you may need to get some help from professionals. Um, you can make life, lifetime gifts, um, and but that may come with its own problems. We'll come on to that later. Think about family, how family dynamics may play out and what you can do to avoid future pain for yourself and others. <clears throat> okay, so what are the taxes? Inheritance tax um, gets charged on estates over and above the allowances at 40%. Um, there are, if you donate 10% of your of that taxable amount to charity, you can drop that residual to 36%. In the case of my mother's estate, that's what we, she died, my mother died nearly a year ago. So the anniversary is coming up now. Um, so we're in the middle of dealing with probate. So this is very fresh to me. Um, but, you know, these are the allowances. 325,000 um, or 500,000 of properties are involved for individuals. I believe, you know, and this is where someone else might be able to come in later, the spouse allowance can be carried forward to double up. So if you're, if you're like my, my father died and then, um, and then my mother's died, if my father has a has a property and he and the allowance wasn't used on his property because so maybe it was below the limits um, or maybe the bit that was over the limit was used up so there's a bit left you can use all of that um, and that gives you a bit more of a fresh a higher threshold before tax is payable um, if you're up for the 10 percent and you'll, you'll end up paying more money than you would if you just paid tax, but we, deci we decided we'd rather give the money to charity and make an extra donation to charity than pay the full amount of tax. Um, if you make gifts, um, lifetime gifts, capital gains tax could come into play. So, Get advice before you do anything. Look at what you want to do first and why. Work out how much you need to see you through your life. Make sure you've got enough income and, you know, and contingencies. So there's a big temptation to not want to pay any inheritance tax, but there's a price to pay. So be really careful. <clears throat> Um, when it comes to inheritance tax, there are exceptions that apply. So spouses aren't, don't, if your husband, wife, civil partner dies, there's no inheritance tax to pay. It's only when, when um, if the money is left to, to the other partner. Um, if money is left to charity or political parties, uh, again, inheritance tax is not payable so lifetime gifts so if you make a lifetime gift there's what's known as a seven year rule and it means you need to live seven years in order for no inheritance tax to be payable if you die earlier then i think it's if it's under three years the full amount is payable and if it's, and then after that, I think it's on a sliding scale. Um, I'll probably send out some links to resources where you can look up all the latest information on these things on the government websites. Um, 
the other thing to watch out for when you make gifts is that you may have to pay no pay capital gains tax um, so if you have a property that was say a rental property and you decide to give that to your children if um, you may be liable to pay capital gains tax on the difference between the price you paid for it and the price that you you hand it over at and then if you unfortunately die before before the seven years is up then you there may be inheritance tax to pay as well so you have to be super careful here make sure you know what you're doing before you go down this road <clears throat> so decide to who to involve Who do you trust and do they have the right knowledge and w will their involvement compromise in it anyway is there any is there going to be any conflict of interest um will your family perceive this as being fair and if they don't are you comfortable with that so um just let someone else in. Um, do your executors have the resources they need to execute your wishes or professionals they can use to assist them? So, for example, my children are in their 20s. They, if they, were, if they had to do it with my estate now, they wouldn't be able to do it on their own. So giving them a list of people who can help them with different things and leaving that perhaps with the letter of wishes perhaps is a good idea or you might want to make one of your executors one of your professionals one of my mother's executors is the accountant and another one is a cousin so neither of them are major beneficiaries of the will so sometimes that can make things a bit cleaner especially when there's a potential for there to be a problem. Um, in my mother's case, I particularly didn't want to be an executor for her will. So you should ask your executors if they're happy to, with that duty. Um, I've been asked to be an executor for a friend of mine. And, you know, I know that it's not going to be an easy job because there are issues with her family. Um, so, you know, that's something that you need to discuss and that needs to be out in the open. Um, so I think, I think I've covered everything on this slide, but, um, you know, when it comes to advisors, you know, just make sure that they're, they're on board with what you want to do, uh, and that you're all singing from the he same hymn sheet. Uh, you might need to go elsewhere otherwise. Um, okay, pitfalls. I think I have probably covered some of these, but just a little checklist. Um, run a health check with your advisor. Get an understanding of probate and how it works, um, what the framework is all about. It's um, basically the process of gathering in all the information about your estate. So a list of assets um, and a list of any anyone you owe money to as well. Uh, your possessions and um, and that all has that all gets sent off. Um, it gets filled a, a solicitor will fill out a form, send that off to the, you know, and, and with also details of how the estate is going to be carved up. Um, I'm not exactly sure what is on the on the form, whether they get details of all the assets, but they'll get a valuation and how how the how the will is to be divided. And it doesn't always have to be as stated in the will. If the beneficiaries agree to a variation 
they are able to vary the terms of the will uh, as long as everybody, you know, nobody is prompting anyone who might get a smaller portion um, has given their consent. So they will have to sign to say that they're happy with the variation. And then that can be made. So, so for example, making a charitable donation. Um, having a joint account, um, like joint bank account, and um, I'm not 100% up, you know, up on what's, what's, what's legal on this. Um, if you have a joint account with someone and the other person dies, I don't believe that account needs to be frozen. But, um, you know, if there's anyone who knows about this, uh, can help here, please chip in later on. We'll put something in the chat. Um, so, but it can help short term, especially if you've got a relationship with a company like us. If we already know um, a relative who acts for you or with you, that's really helpful. <clears throat> uh, estate taxes and implications. You know, you might want to think about which lifetime gifts are taxed more favourably and then don't make assumptions, get it checked over. So, you know, there are things you can do. There are various financial vehicles. I'm not a financial advisor. I don't know about all of them, but I have used some that have worked out very well for my family and saved us an inheritance tax. And I'm not talking only about precious metals. Caroline, just before you move on, Glenn's popped a comment in to say, while you're talking about gifts, the gifts from surplus income can be super tax efficient if planned and used correctly. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and you know, and Glenn, if you're if you're happy to speak about that at the end, that would be, I'm sure everyone would really appreciate that and find it useful. Okay. Um sorry. Is this? <clears throat> okay. Um, precious metals. The, the precious metals we deal with are a physical asset. They're portable. They're liquid. They're easy to convert to cash and easy to gift. <clears throat> um, if you have them in storage with us, and, and uh, we need to deal with your executors, we would need the proper paperwork to be able to hand over your your assets um, to, to your executors. Uh, they, um, but, but anyway, essentially, it's a physical asset, it's portable, it's liquid. You can use them throughout your life and um, you know, what's not in your, what's not left in your estate, you know, you can spend that with no penalty throughout your life, um, you know, other than the usual, sort of, I suppose, capital gains tax, if you've got bars, if you have British legal tender coins, there's no capital gains tax, and that will apply when you make a gift of coins too. If you decide to do that, you wouldn't be hit with that issue of, I've get, gifted my coins, I might have to pay capital gains tax and inheritance tax. Well, you would only have to pay the inheritance tax and that would be only if you didn't survive for, ten, for seven years. So, um, asset diversification, like precious metals, you know, give you got a mixed bucket, mixed basket, of investments. <clears throat> they help protect against inflation, currency devaluation, um, and 
and and and we and I have experienced favourable valuations as well uh, when using one ounce Britannia coins, which are ounce of gold, and I valued them at face value, and my accountant accepted that that and that has gone in as our valuation for the Britannia coins that we had for my mother. So um, think about how you might want your estate divided up amongst people if, if you're dividing things up in species. So you don't have to ch change, turn everything back into cash and divvy out the cash. You can, you can divvy out your coins. So you've got 100 sovereigns or something or 10 or whatever. Give one to each of your children, grandchildren, friends. Um, you know, that's that's one way that you can do that. Um, so choose where and how to buy your metals. Select products that offer the flexibility that you need. Um, we can advise you on that, depending on your circumstances. Don't assume your family will understand what you have, the benefits and the value. I mean, Melissa reminded me about this because um, we have clients who, you know, they love precious metals, they understand precious metals, but their families may not may not have the same understanding. And um, you know, when I do when I come across people who are selling investment gold and silver to us, you know, we're always very happy to buy it. But I also like to tell them, you know, do you think this is something that you would benefit from keeping as it is and having it as an investment rather than getting the money and then finding it, finding something to invest it in? So, you know, maybe teaching them a little bit about precious metals and leave a card, leave cards, help them with who to contact. Um, Keep your ownership documents, um, your receipts, together with your metals, have copies, um, perhaps even passwords to your account. But we can always we can always access account information for people if they need it, um, and do valuations for states as well. So that's something we've offered, um, and provided it's not not too complicated, we're happy to do that free of charge. Um, so if you're going to go down the storage route, what kind of storage do you want? Do you want to store at home? Um, and if you've got a safe, what about the codes? Uh, is there a way for people to, you know, someone to access that safe? If you've got a particularly good safe, it could be a major problem for them to get into. Will cost a lot of money for a professional safe expert to get into. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, it says it all there. Um, you can always, again, provide companies like ourselves with alternative contact details, often very helpful. Um, if we can't get hold of a, a client, we've got someone else, you know, and it might not only. You know, it could it could be it could be ill. We wouldn't know if you if you were taken ill and hospitalised or lost capacity. We wouldn't know who to contact. Um, it would be perhaps when a, a storage bill turns up on your doormat that um, someone might be alerted to the fact that you have precious metals. So. Um, so in summary. I decide how to divide up the residual estate upon death. So when you make a will, it can be pretty basic. It can be, um, I'd like 50% to go to my son and 50% to my daughter. And if they die before me, then to any children that they then have. Otherwise, it all goes to the other sibling. Whatever it is, 
who you decide you want and you want your estate to be dealt with. You don't need to say, oh, you know, a list of assets is not necessary. It might be helpful for people to know where to look. It's not necessary. When my father died, I had to do some forensic accounting and it was really messy and the paperwork all over the place. And I had to go through all the paperwork. He had a big stock and stocks and share portfolio. Um, and some of the companies didn't exist anymore and had been taken over by others. So I started with the bank account and I looked at dividend payments, the clues, and so on. Not every asset has dividends. So, you know, it was, I wrote, had to write a lot of letters. And in, in my father's case, everything went to my mother. So it was, a, so I dealt with the paperwork and getting it all transferred over to her. Um, <clears throat> if you use, it, if you use a financial advisor, then very often all of that stuff might be under one umbrella and they will do that for you. But, you know, in my father's case, it was bits and pieces all over the place. There may be an old bank account here and there. So um, there might be some tips someone knows about how to find lost assets, um, sort of orphan, orphan funds. I don't know, there must be something. Um, think about lasting powers of attorney. Uh, you've got them, they're separate for health and wealth, and you may choose to involve different people for those two. Um, this, this is for when you've lost capacity and it's about stating what you would like to happen if someone else has to make decisions for you. Um, and, you know, it doesn't only have, you know, these could be completely different people from whoever you use for your, for your will. Decide <clears throat> uh, who to talk to and who to, who's going to help you. You know, it could be friends, it could be, you know, often people our own age who are going through this are, you know, it's a great, great opportunity to chat about, you know, how are you, how are you looking after yourself? Who have you got to help you? Do you know anyone good? Um, choose your executors well and who to name them your LPAs. Put your wishes in writing for your loved ones and share them. Um, so how can we help? Once you've reviewed your position, if there's anything you'd like to discuss, you can call the office. Uh, and now opening the floor for questions. We'll be sending out uh, an email to everyone with a link to the recording and a voucher code as a thank you for coming and giving us your time tonight to listen. Um, our next webinar uh, is on gold versus silver on the 20th of August and you'll be able to sign up for that soon. I'll put the link out uh, as well with, with the, the follow-up from this. I'll just check the chat. Um, Thank you, Caroline. Is there anything um, else? There are a couple of questions. Glenn has asked, can you kindly elaborate a little on face value being used for the Britannia probate value? Was the probate value £100 per coin rather than market value? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and as, if it was sovereigns, it would be a pound. And if it was a quintuple sovereign, it would be five pounds. Um, because that is what they are known as. And I was very clear with my accountant and I said to him, if I had a piece of paper that was a £20 note, I would be expected to declare it as having a value of £20. And I wasn't questioned on this. It was accepted. So it remains to be seen as to whether this will be... Um, I think I've got a good case, put it that way, if I needed to have that conversation with um, with a government official, because they would have to admit that paper money was worthless. 
I think, and they wouldn't want to do that. Um, and Glenn has also told us all the money in joint bank accounts goes to the surviving partner without the need for probate. Uh, they only need to see a death certificate. I'm not sure if that applies to other joint accounts, like a joint bullion account. Um, and it, and you, you may have a joint account that's not with a spouse. It could be a, a mother-son or whatever, um, or friends. Yeah, um, I'm not sure about that. Um, so, so, Nick, Nick has, has asked a question, Caroline. If the ownership is in my name and I die, Will my kids have a problem if they decide to sell coins back to you as the items are not in their name? No. No, if if you have proof of, uh, if someone comes to us to sell something, we will take, we will ask for a copy of their ID, just as a matter of course, um, you know, because, you know, for all we know, things could be stolen, but we just take a copy of, of ID just uh, and um, proof of address and ID. So if they've got the paperwork just to prove where they bought the items from, um, if they're not in storage with us, then we don't we don't need to get involved with with any you know legalities there. Uh, if if they if someone sells something to us, we have to assume that they have the right to do that. Um, now, if something is in storage with us, then we would um, we would need to go through the we we would not release um, anything without a grant of probate. So we would need to know that that. Um, that this was allowed and that we knew who the executor was and we would be releasing the assets to the executor or alternatively acting on their behalf. They may ask us to sell the holding on behalf of the estate. Uh, they will most likely ask for evaluation, which we are always happy to give. Um, so we have another message. Uh, so, uh, no, yeah, Glenn is is uh, HMRC fully accept face value. Then, uh, like I said, my experience is we have used this. I can't say one hundred percent that it won't get knocked back. Um, I will know in about six months' time, probably. So you know, I'll tell you how I get on. It may even be that they don't look at it properly. So, um, but Glenn, you're quite right. You know, it's, you know, like I said at the beginning, I'm not giving advice. I'm speaking of my experience. <clears throat> um, do you have any more questions at the moment in the chat or people can speak? Uh, just unmute yourself and uh, join in. I'll, I'll stop sharing this screen now. We are available in the office. If you want to talk about your specific situation with us, um, I know it's not people don't always feel comfortable talking about this publicly. Um, and so I will leave it there. Thank you so much. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night.